Hey guys, good morning. Got some bad news on the harvest side of things. It rained again, so I don't know if we'll be harvesting today. If we do, it'll be pretty late. This morning, we're starting the day off. My brother and I, we were gonna fill up the tanker, drop the tanker off over here, because we gotta use that trailer on one of the semis. It's one of the other semis. We, we can get by with two semis in wheat, but one of the semis that we were gonna use for wheat is still in the, in the uh, repair shop. Also had two cracked airbags waiting on those. So that's the, that's, the, that's the plan for now. And in typical fashion, batteries are dead. So why wouldn't they be dead? I wonder if he's not hitting the, oh, okay. That one's got a push button. One time he told me it was dead and he just wasn't hitting the push button. Too dead to jump start. While that battery's charging up, we came over here to get the combine out. High lag is coming down here to work on this. Hopefully we can get this thing up and going. Ain't so much the bearing, the little idler bearing is out that's uh, the problem. Main thing that we're having issues with is the feeder rake belt slipping. So hopefully I can get to the bottom of that. And then this thing will be ready to go back to the field when the wheat dries up. It's alive. We're off to a great start this morning. Didn't have enough hose, had to come get a hose. Still filling her up. Keep telling BJ it's Christmas presents down there, but he won't go down there and get it. This is a little sketchy looking. A little bit. Yep, she's full. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's actually a little bit of afternoon, so I'm not gonna say good morning, but we are gonna try out wheat again. Um, I'm actually pulling a header wagon with no head on it. Uh, Unverfirth let us use this four wheel steer header cart, so I'm gonna take that back here and then um, swap out one of the other header carts with it. I predict we don't get a run today. Um, neighbors have been running and trying it, and it's still in the high or mid 20s, and that's too wet. So uh, we'll see what we can do. Definitely want to try it, and then we'll go from there. Our local car grill will only take wheat up to 18%. And I got back the grain cart out. I gotta throw a hydraulic hose on my combine before we head down there. That shouldn't take too long, I don't think. Move the grain cart, get it out. Nothing would thrill me more to find out this wheat's like 15% and we can run all evening till we fill up, but I just don't see that happening. So this belt, the crimp is coming loose on, so we gotta replace it. Getting some uh, moisturizer. Grease up them callus. Well, after an oil bath, some 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 creative working words. Got the hose on there. We got to reroute it and probably pull it out of all the oil that's on the ground. Got a nice oil bath out of this deal. And no, the camera wasn't rolling. First thing Dad said was, "Did you have the camera on?" Decided to work smarter, not harder. Dad's going to go take his combine down there. The plan was originally that he was going to keep spraying. And uh, I was going to run down our track. So like I said, we expect it to be too wet still. I, I don't think we're going to get a run. But he actually got done spraying before I got that line on there. So, so he's gonna run and do that. I'm gonna get a bucket of oil and maybe do something about this hydraulic bath I took. One thing is for sure, neither I nor the combine are gonna rust out very soon. Much better. Maybe you're wondering, how did you clean your clothes off? Exact same outfit, same shorts, same shirt. But. I did get a nice surprise from Dad and BJ. The uh, wheat's only 16%, so we are going to run. It's a hot dang. Now I just got to get some oil in it. Uh, we don't have enough oil, I'm afraid. 
We had the wrong kind of hydraulic oil. We had 40, or we had a lot of 68, but not much 46, which is what cloth combine takes. So I'm gonna throw this in here and maybe run the part store real fast. Dad's uh, getting started. It is four o'clock, car gallery is closed. So we're gonna be able to load two semis in a grain cart, which that'll probably be 35, maybe 40 acres, depending on how bad this weed is. Hey everyone, hey, we're trying again. What I got seems awful wet, but uh, we tested 16, 17, so we're gonna run it. But uh, I got the wrong grates in. Thought I had my uh, other ones in. Want to take these grates out, put the regular uh, their, their square stalk for beans more aggressive. I got these round bar for corn and beans if they're not real aggressive. So I need to get some real aggressive ones in there, to clean it up. Can't get the heads, uh, the weed out of the heads. This will help clean it up. All right, there's our sight gauge. I don't know if you can see that, but we're down quite a bit. We got lucky. We're within the operating range, so no part store trip necessary. Before I run up there in the combine, I want to double check the grates I have in. Uh, my APS grates, those are your pre-thresh. I'm pretty positive I have the aggressive ones in. Dad just changed his because he didn't have the aggressive ones in, so pretty sure I have those. Just want to double check, and if not, I'll change them. Turns out I did, in fact, have the wrong grates in. For the cloth combine, these grates were changing. So these are called the APS grates. Your APS is your it's a threshing drum before it gets to the cylinder of the machine. They do, I think, 30% of your threshing and you can adjust which grates you want to see how to make them more or less aggressive depending on crop conditions. In the fall, usually we can leave one grate in and go from beans to corn, but sometimes we do have to change depending on if we're in green stem beans or not. Uh, we have the least aggressive grates in, so apparently everything was shelling pretty easy last year. And Dad said this wheat's a little tough because it's still kind of damp, so that's why we're adjusting our, our grates. Once you get them freed up, they come out really easy. Sometimes they will maybe get stuck, but I did take these out a couple times last year, so they weren't too bad. Now, clearly, the first step before you do this job is to come soaked in hydraulic oil. That way you collect all the dust and it doesn't like, you know, escape. You wanna, you wanna retain that dust for organic matter. Sarcasm. Dad just called me. He is um, still opening the field up. He said he's in a different variety and it's like 22%. He just called me and told me to bring a moisture tester. So that's not what we wanna hear. Now one good thing that we got going for us, for the next week and a half, it's supposed to be 90 degrees. It's only good for the wheat harvest. It's not good for the other crops, but I guess what I'm saying is if it's super wet, we'll wait a day or two because we have a day or two and we don't want to, we don't want to dry weed if we don't have to. A lot of green heads in it. That's not bad. Yeah, I'm gonna get my combine. We might only do one load tonight just because we've already got 300 bushel. Uh, at least we'll know if all the combines are gonna run okay. I don't know. We'll see. Not gonna be super surprised if we don't load everything we got. Okay, here's the first stuff of uh, 2020 wheat. I don't know, some of it's pretty wet. We checked it again, the top right here where I stopped, about 16. On back here where I started the other way, it was like. Finally in the cab. Hopefully that AC catches up here pretty soon. 
Time to get her hooked up and hit the straw. And I'm not all the way on the head. That's why I always try to lock it first because sometimes you might not be able to get on there. And if you can't lock it, you're not all the way on there. Right there, I'm not quite on. There we go. That's better. There we go. Put our locking pin in there. And we're ready to roll, I think. All right, I'm breaking through the middle. It's definitely looking like this is gonna be the only load. Uh, you see that? I don't like that. Also, I highly doubt that yield is accurate. I do not have my uh, yield monitor calibrated just yet, so. Uh, Wishful thinking, but probably inaccurate. Looks like Dad's done. And I think, where'd I go? I think whenever I get up here to the end of this pass, I'm gonna be done. You're down, slide down the pipe over there. You are. See all this green right here? That's the problem, folks. Those little patches like that are probably 25 to 28% moisture. So when you average that all in with the rest of it, it's just really throwing, uh, throwing our moisture off. Let's see what we're averaging for the field. So 21.7 is what I averaged on that pass. Now, like I said, on this load, we're going to have some that was drier, and we're going to have some that was wetter. But I, I wish it was dry, but it's not. That, that yields way off. Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty far off. The yield is. Now our weed agronomist, he just stopped. Uh, he's in the area checking everybody that's running. Uh, apparently we're not the only ones with wet wheat. Uh, pretty common just because of the frost that we had. It caused a regrowth where we put, uh, where we ma manage it with high nitrogen, uh, amounts of nitrogen. Uh, we got a regrowth and that's what's causing these little issues, but um, for the frost that we had, we think our yield's pretty decent. Dad's seeming to think that uh, his combine's making this 80 bushel. I'm not calibrated yet. Uh, that's about 20 bushel off, but from normal, but so yeah, quite a bit of frost, uh, several late season frosts. So I guess it could have been a lot worse, if that's what it makes. And yes, I know my window needs cleaned. Now part of the stuff our wheat tech guy does when he comes out here, as he checks how much loss we've got coming out of the combine. So he did that and I mean normally a little bit of loss is it's pretty normal. Not much, but um uh, said, hey Brian, you've got a leak somewhere in your combine. So we come out here and at first we thought it was a seal right here on the clean grain elevator, but no. Do you see that hole right there? Yeah, the tubing on the clean grain elevator wore out. Now this combine, I'd have to look how many bushels are through it, um, but it has 1,600 engine hours and probably 1,200 separator hours, maybe. Something like that, maybe 1,100. I didn't think it would wear out this fast. Uh, I had a neighbor with one with uh, like 4 million bushel through it. I don't think he wore his clean grain tube out.